Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Conventionally late, as always. Wouldn't be an Elias video if I wasn't. Welcome, hello. In today's video, I will be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Just checking in, reading updates wise regarding the books I've read so far this year. Why I'm talking out of a chopstick, it's because it's my stand-in microphone. While I wait and look for a better option because the current microphone I have right now, she's busted right now, currently. Nothing but a good drop of, you know, Gorilla Glue wouldn't fix, but you know what? We are at that stage in life at the moment. So I hope you guys have all been doing well. You know, just wanted to check in, not just reading updates, but mental health check as well, because you know what, these days, <sighs> Not doing so great, but hanging in there as always. And I actually hope each and every one of you are doing well, you know, living life, stuffing your faces with all the good food and all the good books. Before we get further into the video, I would like to thank today's video sponsor. Cue the clip. Thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. So Book of the Month has some really cool and exciting releases this week. One of them that I am super excited and stoked for. But if you didn't know what Book of the Month is, they're essentially a book subscription service where they send you new releases of hardcover books, basically doing all the work for you, vetting through hundreds of books so that you can spend more time reading and less time researching. They also have a really great skip policy where if you're not feeling that vibe, you know, for that selection of books for that particular month, you can totally skip risk-free. And on top of that, they have the best prices for any newly released hardcover fiction out there. You can get your first BOTM book for just $9.99 with my code, Elias. Two Book of the Month books that I chose for July. So this is Chloe's first adult fantasy, and I still have yet to read any of her books, but I've heard really good things and seen all the hype regarding her books, like on Book Talk and on BookTube everywhere. This one apparently is a reimagining of Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, retold in an epic fantasy. Just judging from the vibe and the summary of this book so far, I feel like I would be more inclined to reach out and read her adult fantasy debut first, rather than her other YA trilogy. All right, so for the second pick, the one I'm most excited for is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Here's the thing, I have read pretty much all of Riley Sager's books. I would say I'm a bigger fan of his earlier works than his later books and I have heard that with this one this will be his last book in a long while because he's going on a huge like hiatus on a huge break. I'm hoping, praying, crossing my fingers that he'll be going out with a bloody encore. A really good blood soaked finale. I don't know some plot twist that'll blow my brains out because I want to say the last two books were just not for me. You know my standards are right here but I'm kind of expecting you know, something up here. These also aren't the only choices. There are at least five to seven other options for you to choose from as well. Again, don't forget to use my code to get your first book for only $9.99. Everything will be linked down below and thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. All right, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the tag. So I've been doing this tag for quite a while now, almost every year. I think I missed like 2019 or something like that. I have all the videos linked down below if you wanna check those out. So far this year, it's pretty embarrassing because I feel like every year that goes by, I read less and less books. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm fed up with the thriller genre, if the literary fiction genre doesn't even interest me anymore, or just even horror, like at all. Like romance in general, don't even touch that. It's just all about fantasy for me. I think that's like my most read genre this year. Guess how many books I've read from January until now? 17. 17 books in like six months. It's like two books a month. I don't know what it is this year. I feel like I feel like there aren't any releases that I'm super excited for or any book currently out or even books that I own that I'm like, ooh, I really want to read that. Like I don't have the fire for it as I did last year where I read like, what, close to 50 books during this time. So yeah, 17 books so far. That's literally the amount of books I know a lot of people here on BookTube read in a month. But you know what? It's okay because quality over quantity. You know, whatever I need to tell myself that I'm doing well in this community, you know? So, <laughs> number one is best book you've read so far this year. And for that one, I'm gonna have to go with The Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. So I actually really, really like this book. I gave it five out of five stars, but not off like a five favorite. I think during the time that I read it, it just felt like a gentle massage to my brain. The writing in general here was so smooth and sensual and comfortable. You know, the best way to put it. And this was like a magical story that feels like it was set in the modern world, like today, but also with that historical fiction aspect to it. So this one primarily follows our main character who writes letters to her missing brother who is actually in the war. Like he's like a soldier in the battlefront and she's writing letters to him, but it turns out her brother isn't getting them. And the way she's sending these letters, it's sort of like mysterious because she types it out like on this typewriter 
and slips it into like this wardrobe where it disappears. And the receiver who's actually getting her letters, I'm not gonna spoil it, but spoiler, it's not her brother. But if you can guess, it's a boy that gets her letters and responds back. That's like the gist of it all. There's a lot more to it, but there's a lot more to it. A lot of meat on its bones, I'd say. And this one also has like light sprinkling, a little dust of fantasy elements sprinkled out here and there, which I thought was really interesting because it deals with like lots of gods in this world and that people really look up and idolize these gods fighting, you know, with them against each other during this war. Number two is best sequel you've read so far this year. For this one, I'm going to choose the third book, the final entry in the Broken Empire trilogy by Mark Lawrence. So there was a time, I think it was like a couple months ago in May, where I just read Mark Lawrence books. This was his first trilogy that he's ever written. I read this one and his latest and most recent release. Oh my God. The difference in writing was astounding, where this one felt a little juvenile to the point where I was like, Oh my God, if he can get this published, anyone can get their book published, right? The latest book that he wrote, which I'll also include in this list as well, you can most definitely tell the improvement, the vast journey that he went on as a writer in general. But I gotta say, I thoroughly enjoyed the last book in this trilogy, how it wrapped everything all together. And overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, albeit some of the fat shaming and just how straight and male centric, you know, alpha domineering this trilogy was. But I still enjoyed it. I don't know if it's also because I identify as a man as well. So maybe there's a fault there. But the third book in this trilogy, total smash. This one primarily follows a truly evil 12 year old child who goes on a rampage after his mother and his brother are murdered on a quest for revenge. It details his adventures, how he brings together a group of grown ass men together and just causing chaos, havoc, death everywhere they go detailing when he's like 12 years old to like a young man as an emperor. If you like blood, guts, gore, fantasy without a lot of magic, more brutal and just gory overall, with a ton of political and quartz warfare, looking for a fun swashbuckling time, then you might want to pick this trilogy up. Go for it. Number three is new release you haven't read yet, but you want to. Um, there are two books that have recently come out. The first one up being Yellowface by R.F. Kuang. When it comes to R.F. Kuang and my relationship with her books, so far it's a two out of three. Um, so Yellowface will determine whether or not I will continue reading her books in the future. I guess in popular opinion, but I do think her books are a little overhyped. Um, in my opinion, I do think that she is a really good writer, but I gotta say her story and her characters were the weakest points for me. Like I'm not as captivated as everyone else is out there because her books have gotten so much hype, well-deserved and whatnot, just for me personally. I just found them to be mid. Like with Babel, I think I gave it like two, three stars. Same with Poppy War. I only read the first book was pretty underwhelmed, but a lot of people really love her books and that's totally fine. They're just not for me, I guess. But I do plan on picking up Yellowface, going with an open mind just because, because it is different from the books that she has written so far. Each new book that she has written has been in like a different genre. The other book that I've been eyeing out for is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This one also gives me similar vibes to The Divine Rivals, where it takes place in the modern worlds with a dash of fantasy. Again, I'm getting another favorite trip of mine, enemies to lovers or rivals to lovers, whatever you want to call it. I've heard nothing but great things. So in fairies, you can always count me in to have a good fairy time. Because when it comes to fairies in general, I always have a soft spot for them. I believe they're real. I believe they exist. I believe they're intermingled, you know, living within society in front of our very eyes. We just can't see them because don't believe or you're just um, poor in terms of spirit. Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. For this one, I have two books. The first one up being The Invocations. This one sounds super wild and really interesting. It follows these three different girls. One of the girls has a sister who was murdered by a serial killer. The other one is the daughter of a billionaire, but she's cursed where insects and flowers like die at her touch and monstrous things come to terrorize her in the middle of the night. Third girl is sort of like the bridge between both girls. She is essentially a daughter of a witch and trying to create spells that would answer both of these girls' problems. But then there's another problem. A serial killer is killing all of her clients one by one. And so all three girls team up together in order to survive against the serial killer and, you know, just try to find answers to their world ending problems. Just your normal, typical day trying to fight against a serial killer, not trying to die. So really looking forward to reading this because I did enjoy her other book, House of Hollow as well, which gave me like Coraline Stranger Thing vibes, which I really liked, which I thought was a really cool stylistic atmospheric book to read. So the other book is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I've also read a book from this other before um, the 10,000 Doors of January, which gave me Starless Sea vibes, 
but just didn't fully hit for me. But I did really enjoy the story and the writing overall, and this one does sound interesting. So this one follows a young girl, an orphan, a high school dropout, who tries to find a better life for her younger brother. They both stumble upon this renowned house in this town called Starling House, which was named after a famous author who is now missing. So the blurb doesn't say much, but as they go into this house, they find weird and mysterious things in a connection that they didn't know they had. So yeah, sounds a little spooky, a little creepy, and I'm here for it. All right, number five is Biggest Disappointment. Easily, I'm gonna go with The Fox Glove King by Hannah Witten. You can find my extensive, passionate, full depth review in my wrap up regarding this book because, oh my God, you know what? This wasn't as bad as like Jennifer L. Armentrout's From Blood and Ash. You know what? It sort of belongs in the same category. You know, I think when it comes to fantasy romance, I just, I just can't do it anymore. I think my last straw is that this book can't decide whether or not it's YA or adults. And it's because it's marketed as adults, but it reads as like the youngest YA book I have read in ages. And it was just with the irony of how these characters acted and talked with each other. Let's just say, I don't think I was the intended audience, but I did pick it up with the intent of liking it. I mean, I picked it up at Target, read the blurb, and I was like, oh my God, this sounds really interesting. I mean, you have necromancy, gods and saints and all that, but it's pretty much failed on all fronts with that. This one I gave one out of five. Easily the worst book I read so far this year. Number six, biggest surprise. Easy. I'm gonna go with Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So going into this one, this is my third book from Miss Reid. And I gotta say, I get the hype. I was blown away. I highly and thoroughly recommend reading this book through the audiobook format because I feel like if I had physically read this in this format, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much. The voice acting and the narrators, yes, there's multiple narrators in this entire story for the characters. They just elevated the story even more than your normal average audiobook narrator. And that for me was where the story just really shine and popped off. But I really love this one. I love the show even more. I reacted to it with Cindy and we both agree that you should probably consume the story through an audiobook format. I was a bit hesitant and wary going to this one because, you know, when it comes to Taylor Jenkins Reid, all of her books just overall hyped, maxed to the extreme. And everyone and their mother has read it and loved it. Just always, you know, skeptical of hype things. But I shouldn't, not with this one. Rest assured, I can guarantee you the hype is real if you listen to it on audiobook. There you go. Number seven is favorite new author, debut or new to you. So for this one, I'm gonna go with Mark Lawrence, just because I read his books for the first time this year and for them to be exact, which makes him the most read author this year for me as well. I mentioned earlier how I read from The Broken Empire, his first trilogy. I picked this one up after finishing the trilogy. And I gotta say the differences in just craftsmanship, story, characters, writing overall, totally different. If you had slapped another author's name in here, I would have believed you. Honestly, Mark Lawrence sort of gaslit me because I was like, you know, not expecting much after the first trilogy. You know, don't get me wrong. It's not like the worst thing I've ever read, but I could just tell from a reader's perspective, just coming from The Broken Empire to this book, it was eye-opening for sure. The story, the characters, the writing, everything. This one, just what I love most to read in books, especially in fantasy books. Books about books, books about friendships, books about you know different things and people discovering just worlds and different things about books. It's just one of my favorite things to read about. He really delivers with this one. So Mark Lawrence is yet another author that I'll be looking out for in the future as well. Number eight, newest fictional crush. So I literally almost never answer this question because I don't really have fictional crushes, but if we are staying on brand, um, I just finished watching season three of The Witcher. And I gotta say, Geralt of Rivera, I am free and available any time of the day. Um, open, you know, to whatever you need. You know, God gave us seven to 10 holes for a reason. And I could be, you know, that reason. You know, we are not being Delulu here, folks. No, there's a reason why this question is in this tag and that everyone's doing it, right? So, Geralt of Rivera, I am free and available. Number nine, newest favorite character. For this one, I'm gonna have to go with the two characters in Deco Boko Sugar Days. This one has a trope, which I really liked, but it's flipped. The main character is like 5'3 like or 5'5, five five, and the guy that he's been crushing forever on is his childhood best friend who is like over six feet tall. And he is like full on golden retriever, love and flowers and sunshine. The angry guy is like an angry, pessimistic chicken, right? But it's so cute. They're dynamic together. I loved it so much. If you're looking for a really wholesome manga to read, this, I believe, is the first in a duology. You're welcome. 
Number 10, a book that made you cry. So far this year, I have not shed any tears on any piece of fictional literature. Have I shed and wept a few tears over my mental health? I mean, yes, that goes without saying, but so far, the only book that I can think of coming close to even admitting you know, any type of feels would be a thriller book, surprisingly. And this one is The Silent Woods. I honestly wouldn't even call this a thriller. It's more of like a psychological family drama. It's about this father and his young daughter who are hiding away in the woods. And you don't know why, you don't know what their story is, but as you read and figure things out, it's sort of a really sad story. And the ending for this one, you know, got me a little teary-eyed, I gotta say. I was not expecting it at all. If you're looking for a slow-paced mystery, then I'd recommend this book. It deals with some aspects of like fatherhood, grief, and PTSD. All things we can relate to, of course. Number 11 is Book That Made You Happy. I'm gonna go with The Stolen Air by Holly Black. The reason why I'm putting this book on this list to this question is because I finished and completed the original trilogy that this world and original story takes place in. You are following secondary characters that were much younger in the original trilogy. You are following the brother of the main character who was a baby in the original trilogy and now he's like a 17 year old pompous teenager you know, heir to the throne. And it was just really nice, comforting being back into this world again with some new fresh faces and danger, more expanded adventure overall. I really liked it. I mean, I gave this one a four out of five and I do think this is also the first in a duology. So number 12 is most beautiful book you bought so far this year or received? This one. Last but not least, we have number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? For a while now, I'm in like my fantasy era and I really, really want to finish, hopefully by the end of the year, all of the books in the Realm of the Otherlings by Robin Hobb. Last year, I read and completed nine books in the series, and I believe I have six books left because I'm in the middle of the first book, the quartet of the series. This book series is comprised of 16 books, and I have pretty much read half of it, which I was pretty proud of. Each book is like anywhere from five to like 900 pages. It's insane. Pretty much my favorite fantasy series of all time. There are books that I do value more in the series, AKA Fool's Fate and Royal Assassin. I also have dedicated reviews talking about each set in the trilogy, if you wanna check those out, because you should get on board. So last and not least, Another author I also hope to um, read and finish by the end of the year is Brandon Sanderson. As you can see here, I have Words of Radiance and Oathbringer um, left to read, as well as like other books um, in between, apparently. It's like an order to read them. I just haven't touched it yet because, but a commitment I'm hoping to break into. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. Aside from those fantasy books, I'm hoping to also, you know, read and complete some of my manga collection that I have on my shelves, as well as some short literary fiction books. I am prioritizing reading the short, under 200 page literary fiction books first, rather than the 400 page plus books, just because I feel like they would give me like a good sense of accomplishment if I did finish and complete it. Couple of announcements before I end off. I do have a trip that I'm planning next year in July. We are hopefully going to Mexico City. I will leave a link down below in case you are interested in signing up and joining me and some other fellow travelers to embark on this trip as we explore Mexico City, you know, eat all the good food, try out and visit all the touristy things because the last two times that I went with Cindy, I just had a complete blast visiting Thailand and Vietnam. And the second announcement is that I am soon starting a Patreon. I will have an announcement video detailing all of the shenanigans sometime within the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. But that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know some of your answers to some of the mid-year questions I would love to know. Thank you again for watching you guys and I will see you all soon with a new video.